Okay. Uh, welcome back to the podcast today. Very special guest. We got Ben Houselog. How is that? Am I saying that right? Houselog? Yeah, you're saying it right. Okay, good. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing, doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, this is this is a good uh, good Iowa special. We got I'm from Iowa oh, as, yeah. as well as Ben is, so we don't get a lot of get a lot of these around here. So I'm very happy to to talk to a fellow Iowan. Oh, not yeah. not much going on around here, but <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, you you post primarily on TikTok. I know you have a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the actual like getting into TikTok? Why? What made you want to do it? Was there other content creation before that? Uh yeah, like ever since I was like um when I was like eight, I made a YouTube channel and I'd like post like looking back on it, it was horrible content. We've all I was been eight there. years old. Yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> so I've just I've just like been making videos ever since I was eight. And, like whenever we'd go to like a class project or a skit, I just I just make like the best one I can. And I just kinda realized that I want to make content. I don't want to be as much of a social media person but i want to make videos and you know i streamed did i got like i never got any viewers before but uh (laughs) then when tiktok came out it was just kind of you know screw it because i well i was on musically and uh yeah i've been on this journey for a long time so is is the do you like the short form of content like do you like that making that like producing that type Mm -hmm. of content it's, it's something quick and easy. I have a lot more pride and happiness in the longer videos I make, like the YouTube videos mm-hmm. or like the videos that takes a long time to shoot. If it's like, you know, people make TikToks, like they're waking up one, like they're waking up for 30 days and have one second each day. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff I like, but uh, short videos are just quick and easy and they, they're they pretty funny too. I like them. Yeah, yeah. you you got some good good comedy. I like, I appreciate that. I like the... Uh... The idea you've been recently bringing back some trends on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And maybe I was scrolling through and I was like, "Wait, is it? Are these like old videos or like reposts?" I'm like, and then I saw one. They're like, "I'm bringing back old trends," and I was like, "I love this. I love this oh, idea. Yeah. I'm oh, I'm yeah. here for this." Mm-hmm. That 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 era of TikTok was just undefeated. It's just it's undefeated, dude. Yeah, it's there's stop, nothing better. Um, the great migration from Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I think a lot of people, at least for me, like my heart is on YouTube. It's always mm-hmm. been on YouTube, but just the discoverability, just everything about TikTok, like I can make these long forms of content like a podcast or just even a video and you get good content for TikTok. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. all this stuff, it's just, there's nothing like what, like I don't, I wasn't there at the beginning of YouTube with like little, uh, like a little amount of creators or like mm-hmm. high discoverability. So it's a lot harder, and so like TikTok brings that energy, oh, yeah. you know, to be able to be discovered. When mm-hmm. when did you start doing TikTok? Uh, I think around. I was uh, October twenty eighteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And how how was the beginning like were you one of those people who had like a viral video at the beginning or like when oh, you first no. started really no, it, took, it took me like uh, like oh, 200 something videos before one <laughs> even blew up and i'd like i it blew up it was the uh trend um you remember they did pretty boy swag by soldier boy okay yeah and then it popped something that you look like well i had really curly hair in the summer so i looked like linguini from right <laughs> so i put two of them together on that and then I, I went to football practice and then i came back and looked at my phone after practice and it blew up and then then it was just like shot out of the can and i just, just kept going that's crazy that feeling yeah. the feeling like I, I my video like my most recent one that got like quite a bit of views like more than i ever expected was i wo- had woken up and it was like it shot up and i was like oh my god like mm-hmm. that's the craziest thing i've never experienced anything like that so i can imagine something after football practice just looking at your phone oh yeah dude, that's feeling like, yeah it's a it's a feeling but you got to be careful how you manage those feelings yeah for sure some 
sometimes it can like you'll you'll try to go viral instead of just making good videos and then you'll just put yourself in a bad headspace that's what i tell everyone like even before i had a video that did relatively well i said i don't really make content to go viral mm -hmm. because it's it's that's why i like youtube so much is because i never really expect them to like to go viral i've never mm -hmm. been like this video is going to go viral on youtube like yeah. it's just making content and then maybe like for one person to see it and then be like oh i like this guy i'm gonna subscribe to him but it's oh, like yeah. If you keep reaching every video for a new idea to go viral, I think that you could really hurt the way you think about content creation. I don't think that's a way oh, to yeah. create content in general at all. Oh, you're correct. Yep. Is that, Definitely. have you got into like that bad headspace before? Like where you're reaching? Oh man. I, it's, it's like an every, every day, like occurrence, you know, the, the thought comes into your head. I mean, it's the best content is when you're doing it just for fun. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you start, when you start like thinking about the numbers and I've, I got a lot better, but I used to be all about the numbers, not like in an arrogant way, but in a, like a, I was competitive. So I was like, okay, this video got this much. I need this next video to go that much. And when it wouldn't, I'd get really down on myself and my content. Mm -hmm. And I would just start getting like, it, it, I just started creating like shitty content and can I swear? It... Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I was... <laughs> nah, you're good. <laughs> yeah. But I was creating like shitty content. And sometimes I still, I like, I catch myself doing it. And I'm like, shit, but, uh, no. Yeah. You, you, it gets you, it gets you for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, do you, do you, I see a lot of other creators, like if you start or like you find a creator who's like kind of at the same like level as you like and then you start to compare yourself um mm. with whether it's numbers or like if you have you know 500,000 followers they have 500,000 followers and they're pulling 10,000 more views than you or whatever like just comparing yourself in general that's another way to to get in your head and you know not produce the best mm. content possible is that exactly. something that do you do you compare because i i personally do i just want to say that i oh, i do yeah. all the time i used to all the time and the thing is like not just on social media but like i think it was like teddy roosevelt who said something about comparisons the thief of joy and it's correct because like if like see if i shoot a basketball and i miss it and i try to be like well steph curry made it yeah as it's such a such a drastically different thing to compare yourself to. Mm -hmm. So I started to compare myself to other creators. And one thing I got really good at is noticing when I got into a bad headspace and then I would just quit TikTok, which basically I, I never really had plans to quit. And I've done it like four times, but what it does is it gets everybody off me, off my back. I don't think about it anymore. I delete everything off my phone and I just kind of chill out. Mm -hmm. And then I come back with a better headspace. But uh, yeah, that com the comparison sucks unless you're comparing yourself to who you were like yesterday. That's what I do now. That's very good. I I didn't really think of that, but that's that's a very good. That was some very inspirational words. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think I think maybe creating for the right reasons is probably the healthiest thing you can do. Not oh, yeah. create out of. I see a lot of people, especially on TikTok, um, who who've never created before. Like, if you want to be a creator or anything, you can't let numbers define your content at all. Yeah, you can't compare. You can't create out of greed. Yeah, and I and, think. Uh, oh, I, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was gonna. I was just gonna say. I think a lot of people who create for virality um, will get down on themselves because. I mean, if I did that, I would have quit after the first 150 videos I made. Cause none of them did shit. So exactly, I feel you. Um, yeah, the creators that I know, and I used to be friends with a lot of creators, and I honestly do not think I have like a solid creator friend now, just because they like. They would be so dead set on going viral, and they would like send other creators videos to me and they'd be like bro like this shit isn't even funny like why is it going viral and i'm like dude like if you need to focus on your own stuff 
like what I was about to say was the people who create content for the right reasons is last summer, uh, I was in a video with Mr. Beast and I kind of, I picked his brain just a little bit and I wasn't around him that much because, you mm -hmm. know, it's a busy guy, but he honestly cares about what he does. Like I've never seen anyone that has more passion to make videos than him. I don't think anyone ever will come close to that. All that stuff that he does it for is like, that's exactly, he wants to do it for that. He doesn't care about money. He doesn't care about views. He cares about making a good impact. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is, uh, we're kind of losing that now, but in some creators. I, I love the fact that you brought up Mr. Beast because he inspired me when I listened to a podcast with, with him and the way that he talked about YouTube, you could just tell that that wasn't an accident of what he did. Oh no, not at all. And I think that's, that's another point to being a creator is like him and then like dream, like Minecraft. He, those two are like the most not accidental viral people. And they have like the longest sustainability because they mm -hmm. just know they learned, they know. Mr. Beast is probably the most knowledgeable person in the space. Oh, like yeah. he lives and breathes YouTube. I mean, I don't know how many channels he has with over a million subscribers, but it's too many. This it's guy, an empire. yeah, this guy literally has a YouTube empire. And I, I actually didn't know that you were in a. I think I might have saw it, or like saw something about it, but I didn't know yeah. you were in a Mr. Beast video. What, what video? It was um, I don't remember the exact title, but it was one of those like where he challenges different people. So I uh, just kind of went out there and they let me be in the video, which was, was it, like surreal. It was so cool. Like just seeing how much work is put in. I'm like, like that's, that's doing it right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not being complacent. Like I never ever want to be someone who's like, does a video and is like, okay, let me, let me chill. That video is good enough. I'm just going to keep making it just like that. I always want to make videos better and better and better and better and just always improve. And, uh, so that whole experience, what, what did that, so you took that away from it. Is there anything else that you took away from, you know, just being around, like we said, the, the YouTube empire of Mr. Beast? Uh, it was kind of tough to really be around him a lot because it was, yeah. uh, last summer was with COVID okay yeah. and all that but um just seeing how many people he brought together and just kind of seeing that and just kind of like realizing and seeing that like him in person and how much pride he takes in all the little things and how he treated everyone with the utmost respect just kind of seeing that if that guy is i firmly believe that he will be the most subscribed person ever on youtube yeah i don't seeing think a guy like that who is like literally like giant, a giant of YouTube, a pillar. And who out, he had a YouTube rewind that was better than YouTube's YouTube rewind. <laughs> like he is literally bigger than YouTube. Seeing a guy like that and that he can still treat everybody with a ton of respect. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get into drama and he just carries himself with a lot of poise. I saw that and I'm like, why would I like, why are some people they lose themselves. He hasn't lost himself. He mm -hmm. built himself and then he kind of got the empire around him because everyone knows that when you think of a genuine selfless YouTuber, nine out of 10 people are going to say Mr. Beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think there's ever anything bad about him. He's like the only YouTuber out there who just is a good guy known as the mm -hmm. good guy. I mean, just like you said, like treats everyone with the utmost respect. That's crazy how mm -hmm. that's that's amazing i'm i'm so glad to hear that <laughs> he's awesome do you do you put any pressure on yourself when it comes to content creation oh i put a ton of pressure on myself all the time i uh just not to go viral but i i want to i want people to like my biggest thing is if i could like get anything across in my videos is that it's cool like it's okay to be yourself you don't have to think like other people think because i mean you so for instance it's probably a lot different growing up in ida grove than it is in ankeny mm -hmm. 
because people are all raised differently. So when you see all these controversy, like, oh, they have that opinion, so we should go attack them for it. They grew up in a way different environment than you did. So their opinions are going to be different. We shouldn't bash people. We should accept that. And we should all kind of like, just, we're just too like, we're too toxic, especially on social media. Mm-hmm. To the point where it's it's not even fun being on social media anymore. It's more like negativity sells. Positivity sometimes sells, but most of the time the negatives are going to outweigh the positives, which is really sad. Yeah. I think that I mean that's just like you know, there's drama channels that obviously do so well. Like everyone wants to know drama. TikTok exactly. drama, you know, there's so much yeah. of it. All that shit sells like crazy. I I think that's one hundred percent true. Um, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't understand why. I try not to. I try to do you know, bring across messages in my videos. Like there's things that I believe in and stuff like that. Um, that I want to create content for and you know advocate for. But I think the pressure um that a lot of people put on your on themselves especially with tiktok like do you do you have uh like an upload schedule you know like do you try to post like or do you just post when you want to create uh whenever i i i like made a rule for myself not to set an upload schedule for like just because then you put pressure on yourself and then you might make like a like a horrible video yeah i don't want to post that I don't care if my video goes viral, but if I'm at, if I if, say I'm like at a public event and someone's like, oh, you have a TikTok account, like, can I see your videos? If they see a video that has 2 million likes, but it's a horrible video, they don't care about the likes. They're like, this video sucks. Yeah. But they're like, oh, this video is good. Like, I like this video. Maybe I'll tell my friend, hey, have you seen this video? I'd rather create quality than quantity. That's, yeah. that's my big thing. Yeah, I don't, I also don't put, like that pressure on myself to upload like once a day or anything like sometimes i'll post three four times a day if i like have content especially with these podcasts but like Mm -hmm. today i didn't post anything because i didn't have anything to post so i I knew i was doing this as well so i think that's super important as well um what about what about your mental like how how is that Ben, or how is that going with social media and creating content? So, I had like now this I'm like open about it all the time. Is that I really struggled at the start of my career with because you know how people are they hop on burner accounts, they like I've, I've been called every name under the sun. People have threatened to do a ton of different stuff from burner accounts, all that kind of stuff. And people found a joke I had made like two years ago that was acceptable two years ago, but isn't now. They just taking mm-hmm. that like. At like, since I was 16, 17, 18, now I'm 19, I'm still a teenager. I still don't know shit about the world. <laughs> and I, I honestly, like, you don't know your true self until you're, like, 29. Yeah. So they, they just attack every little flaw I had and all that. And at the start, I was, it, it fucked me up. Like, I was, like, everyone, like, looked at me like I was on top of the world. But I'd get so nervous and anxious. And I'd be like, oh, shit, I've got a Snapchat from someone. Maybe they found something I did that's bad or they think I did something bad and then I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. But my mind would race about that stuff. And then kind of realized that about, I think the start of May for the month of May, I didn't go on social media. I deleted all social media off my phone and it was peaceful. I got so much done and that comparison stuff, all that, Oh my gosh, am I in trouble? That all went away. And I was just, a lot happier but even though i'm back on social media the lessons i learned help it help me to go on social media a lot easier yeah i yeah i saw your i saw your video about taking a break and i think i've thought about it but at the same time like i i don't know i've been i don't have that i don't have like a hate mob or anything like people trying to dig up my shit like Mm -hmm. I'm just not there. I mean, hopefully, yeah, but I'm just not there, you know? Um, But when I... Did you... So did you create videos in high school at all? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. well, well, I, I just want to, cause when I was in, like, I started creating videos, like when I was in middle school and I had like people in my school on burner accounts, like on my videos and stuff. Like oh, they had exactly. Me too. 60, I used to get 60 dislikes every video because they had 60 accounts ready to dislike my videos. That's fucked up. And that's so much time though. That's so much time to sit there on 60 accounts. Yeah, that is like, golly, bro. I can't, I can't stand those. I, I got made fun of a lot. Yeah. For, uh, for making TikToks and shit. They'd be like, oh, you're going to go make it t like, and it, most of the time, all that stuff stems is just from jealousy. Yeah. And so I'm like, you're literally taking the time out of your day to hate on me when, like, come on now. Why are you taking time out of your day to hate on me when you got um, you got a pile of shit that you got to take care of, but you're too scared, you're too jealous of someone else, yeah. that you're not going to take care of your own shit, and then it's just, those kind of people are the ones who are, like, sad. Yeah. Well, the, the good thing is that the, the comments are still there, but they changed the name on one of the accounts. I, I obviously know who it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 But that shit's, I mean... Like, you, it takes a lot of, it honestly takes a lot of, you know, nuts to put yourself out there on social media and try to make it something, especially when you're, when you don't have anything like crazy to show for it or anything like that. You're just creating it because you love it. Like, that's, you know, what we do at the start is because mm -hmm. we just love doing it, but it's not like we're famous or anything. So it's, they're just shit talking you and you're just trying to put your head down and you know, try to make something out of it. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's um, that's how it is. Cause, I mean, on TikTok, you, usually my videos do really well, but as soon as I go to like Twitch or YouTube, I get like no views, mm -hmm. and then everyone's like, "Bro, like you're getting no views on this, you're getting no views on that," and I'm always losing followers on different stuff. And at this point, I'm like, dude, I love what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm having fun doing this. If you got, if if you want to take the time out of your day to hate on me. Cool. Thanks for the view. Thanks for the comment. Thanks for the even even thank you for the dislike. See ya. I'll see you. I'll see you down the road. Yeah. One one thing I used to tell people, and this is because I've always wanted to be a comedian. One thing I told I told a girl one time, and she was like, she's like, I only liked you because you had a following. I was like, all right. <laughs> and she's like, but now that you don't have that following, I think we're done. I was like. Okay. And I like texted her and I was like, all right, in 15 years, when you bring your son to my comedy show, I'm not going to sign an autograph for his bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that kind of stuff. I just, I find humor. In it. Yeah. I mean, especially growing up, like, you know, I mean, you probably understand like where I grew up. Yeah, uh, you know, small town Iowa type shit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. We had a we had a kid who went viral on TikTok, had like two hundred thousand followers in my town, and literally people like gave him smug looks all the time. He ended up deleting his account, like just altogether. And but what what I was gonna say was, you know, I hear it all the time where it's like, you know. You, your crazy dreams they're not coming true like stop living in fantasy land like that's those are direct quotes from my ex-girlfriend's mom like all this shit and i'm just sitting here just putting my head down like i do this every single day you know i mm -hmm. i'm not gonna fail well you do a great job i appreciate that i, I like i like the videos were like oh my goodness everyone's been saying so many nice things to me recently like oh, that's because you're doing a good job dude I appreciate so, I mean, that. So, you gotta, so sometimes you gotta pat yourself on the back. You're I mean, good job. you're doing a good job. I'll take it. I'll take the compliments. And I didn't get a lot of them. I didn't get a lot of them, but I'm getting a lot of them now. So, Ride the wave. Yeah, I gotta try. I think it's like, it's crazy what, like everything that's going on, you know, even you coming on this, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. I appreciate your time and being able to talk to me and stuff like that. Likewise. Thank you. Um, I, I'm curious to where, 
what what are your plans for the future when it comes to because i know you are a football player is there um and are you you're in college um Mm -hmm. so what what are you what are you majoring in and is that something that you're going to take serious after like once you get your degree or is it full content creation for ben well um I came into college as a communications major because it was easy, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, ch- I changed it and I'm going with a double major in marketing and psychology and I'm going to take the stuff I learned and then mold it around my videos. Love with that. the marketing aspect, I've been taken advantage of by companies, by managers. I want to market myself. I want to be my own manager. I want to learn how to do all that. And then in turn, if the YouTube career doesn't work out, I can help guide people along the way. Or I can be like, go to a company and be like, look at how well I built up these social media accounts. I can do that for your company as well. And I have this degree. And then with psychology, um, I just want to understand how to make people feel good. Because at the end of the day, there's so much negativity. Like you, you have like middle schoolers killing themselves over comments on social media. Mm-hmm. The suicide rates are rising. And it's sad because everyone gets attacked for different opinions. And I just want to, I want to understand how I can try to use my platform to change it. If I, if I could delete all of my social media a day, never go on social media again. And honestly, just like live like a monk, but everyone else is having great time and all this stuff gets uh, figured out and solved. I do that shit. Cause I just want to make, sh- I just want to, let people know that it's okay to be yourself. You don't have to change for other people. You don't have to compare yourself to other people because you are who you are. You're not you're not living your life for somebody else. Sorry, I get a little passionate about no, that. No, <laughs> I fucking love it. I love it. I was just about to say I I didn't realize how cuz like you you have this persona of, you know, comedy and shit. I didn't realize how much of a like a good genuine dude. I, I so I'm so happy we fucking got to do this because yeah. I want to show now I want to show the world that like this guy, he he's good shit, you know? Yeah. That's kind of, I, that's kind of my biggest mistake is that I, people being honest, if I was looking from the outside in, I would think I was kind of a, not a, not a douche, but just like a comedy. I don't take shit seriously kind of mm-hmm. guy. And that's yeah. like, that is the persona that my videos come across as, but that's like what well, like I put my heart and soul into my videos. That's what like this is what I am going I I'm, I'm not saying this is what I hope to do. It's what I'm going to do. And no one stop like no one's stopping me. I'll go to whatever lengths it, it takes. Actually I have a story I set up and it was uh when I first started posting on YouTube after TikTok blew up. I set up for forty nine straight hours making a video god damn and the thing is is the video fucking sucked i showed it to my dad and he was watching the video and he's like this is fucking awful (laughs) and usually like usually people get defensive dude i I was like i was like i wasn't mad because he said that i was mad because he was fucking right it was awful Dude, I had a fucking dude for three minutes. It was literally just my feet walking through an airport. Like, I don't know what kind of fucking K K value brand Casey Neistat I thought I was, but three he told minutes. me that. Dude, it was ass. So I, I saw that and I was like, "What kind of motherfucker? What kind of crazy ass dude is going to sit at a computer for forty nine hours making this video and have it be dog shit?" <laughs> Like, you've got to have something wrong with you because that's how much it meant to me. And so, dude, he told me that. And I was like, I was like, I was I was more glad because he was honest. Yeah. And it's still on my channel because I don't delete my videos. It's like, I want to see how people progress. It's like Houston trip, dude. It's ass. <laughs> it is ass. I, it's I, horrible. Dude, I, I have like, I've put time, I put so much time in this, like, so many videos and 
I just thought this was funny that like the the stupidest shit like I have this one TikTok where I was on Omegle and a girl said, "Do you want to see me queef on command?" And she did it, and it was the most disgusting shit ever and I posted on TikTok and my dad literally never, you know, never seen any of my stuff like all or no, he's seen like my shit, like my YouTube videos and stuff. But yeah. that's the one that he loved the most was that one. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like out of every video, this is the one that you find funny. Yeah, dude. It's the dumbest shit always goes viral. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't, I can't even, but that's 49 hours on a video. Dude. I, yeah. It's, how, it was, how was the Houston crazy. trip though. <laughs> it was cool. It was, uh, I wasn't like, <laughs> It was the trip was good. <laughs> like it was really fun because I was out there with a ton of TikTokers, like uh, Polo Boy, Nutchez, and those guys. It was it was cool, but uh, you know, it it was cool and all. But god damn, that video was garbage, bro. <laughs> it was horrible. Uh, I love it. Is there um when you when you like started to uh, you know build up your you're following on TikTok. Was there people or who were the people like coming up with you? And like, did you connect with any of them and like share advice or like get sharing advice? If there was any bigger people that took notice of you and what, mm -hmm. and what was that advice? Um, I didn't really ever get any advice as much as I kind of just, uh, made, made friends, you know, uh, John, if you ever heard of John, uh, I think his last name's Go, NGO. He's um, he used to do stuff with his dad, and now he just is a he's a streamer and he's he's blowing up and he freaking deserves it. He almost got in on Phase Five. Oh really? But he yeah he was one of the final like I think what was it twenty, and okay. he just didn't get it. But him, he's probably the guy that I've learned the most just watching his come up. And I haven't talked to him in a while, but I always I keep tabs see how he's doing just kind of yeah my camera does it sometimes <laughs> no you're good you're good okay um just kind of seeing how like he gives a shit about his content mm -hmm. when people give a shit about their content that's all that that's all i can ask for but coming up with people uh him uh nutchez you know nutchez is i don't think so i feel like i'm gonna he's know uh, who he's, these coo people. he's coochie man Oh really? That? Oh yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, I know him. <laughs> yeah, I, I got came you. up with him, and yeah, those are the guys I came up with. But I never really got into the. I couldn't. I tried. I just. I'm. I'm not like those guys. Are, not the guys I had said, but like, the culture is toxic. Mm -hmm. Like I. That's not. That's not me. I don't. I'm not self-centered. I don't care about, like, I just, I don't want to say anything that's going to be, you know, fuck it. <laughs> They're assholes. They're fucking douchebags. Yeah. That's just how it is. And if they have a problem with it, they can suck my meat, bro. Because <laughs> they were, they fucking put each other down like crazy. Yeah. Instead of building up, they, they like, they, their fake. Oh, great job! And then you turn around, they, one of those, yeah. <laughs> they're just, they, they don't like seeing other people winning. Yeah, I never really understood that kind of culture because I assume I'm not obviously behind the scenes with a lot of TikTokers. I have my small group. It's been a small group. Like there's, there's only a couple content creators that I'm friends mm -hmm. with, shit like that. But we've been friends for since 2015 type shit. Um, mm -hmm. But I assume, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right, that there's a lot of, like you said, you said this earlier, like, this video's dog shit, like, why is it blowing up? Like, that type of shit. I bet that said so much behind closed doors with these bigger people. Like, if one of my best friends TikTok blew up, I'm, I might be jealous, but, like, a healthy jealous. Like, like dude, you know what? He deserves it, but, like, obviously, yeah. I wish that was me, but obviously he deserves it he made the video he did he makes good content that type of shit um oh 100 but 
I, I'm not I'm not preying on their downfall at all. I want I want to be there right with them, and shit. But I just I don't know. I don't. I always knew with these TikTokers or there's a lot of TikTokers I personally don't like, like that I've never met or anything. I just know how they are and shit. Yeah, there's a lot of TikTokers that I met that I used to be friends with that I cannot stand anymore. Yeah. Just because, yeah. I mean, they change. Mm -hmm. They literally, like, lose everything. I mean, they, like, what you can't do is as much as, you know, you have a fan base, sometimes you have to put your foot down. You have to be like, look, that's not me. Because I remember last summer, it's like when I was, like, blowing up. Like, I, like 100K a week. Good Lord. I got offered to go and stay in a house in LA from multiple people. And I sat down with my parents and they're like, look, we don't think you should go. We think you should go to college. And I was pissed because I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But looking back on it, every single person that went out to LA is nothing like they used to be. LA changes. It changes everybody. And I mean, like when he, whenever YouTubers go out to LA, that's a death. That's a death of the YouTuber. They all hate it too, and it's expensive. Motherfucker, eight bucks for a cheeseburger? God damn! <laughs> like, geez. Bro, I've never even been to LA. I was in the LA airport when I was a kid. I went to McDonald's. They're like, yeah, it's gonna be ten dollars. I'm like, motherfucker, I asked for a water cup. <laughs> Come on. Now. Could you imagine the rent too? Like if you had to pay rent out there, dude, you you could pay like two thousand dollars a month in rent, and that compared to like somewhere in like Texas. In Texas, two thousand dollars a month in rent takes you forever. Like mm -hmm. it takes you a long ways. Two thousand dollars a month of rent in Cali, you're living in a fucking closet. That's how much my entire house is right now. Two thousand dollars a rent. Dude. Yeah, we'll do a hey, I, hey, Iowa. That's hey, why I'm never Iowa. leaving Iowa. That's, that's why I'm never ever up, leaving baby. Iowa. I pay five hundred bucks leaving. for a house. <laughs> oh, dude, let me, what, what's the story behind the tat? If uh, you don't mind. I have multiple. Okay. Um, so they all tell a story. Okay. Um, this obviously is a fucking superhero tattoo, but it's um, so this is the day I I have type one diabetes. And this was the day oh, okay. I was diagnosed with type one. And then the flash came out in 2014. I was diagnosed in 2015. So when, when I was like in the hospital, um, the one thing that I wanted was my fucking laptop when I was mm -hmm. staying in there. So like when I had my laptop, I was watching, you know, um, I actually just got into watching phase and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like those guys really, like I've gotten to spoke to Faze Blaze Blaze mm -hmm, again. I saw that. Um and I told him behind closed doors on how much like that shit meant to me because like when you're in a hospital sick, like I didn't even know what the fuck diabetes was. So like I'm literally ninety five pounds in a hospital bed and these guys mm -hmm. are the ones that are cheering me up. So like it means yeah. it means a shit ton to me. And like there's probably so many other kids out there who were more sick than me in a hospital bed doing the same shit. Um, so those guys obviously mean a lot, but the fucking flash, um, was like the first TV show I really got into afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the Rose is my childhood. Cause I had someone named Rose in my life who was very special. And then the flash is just a very special TV show to me and my favorite superhero. So those are my tattoos. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, meeting those those childhood youtubers is special i yeah. met um like my favorite growing up you know who mmg is yeah so he followed me back on tiktok one day and i, I freaked i freaked the <laughs> fuck out i freaked out yeah, yeah he's he's cool dude the the best yeah, follow me. the best thing ever was mm -hmm. like when you meet them and they are better than you could ever fucking imagine yeah like because you could definitely meet your childhood like i've i've met i'm not gonna say any names but there's this one person who i really looked up to and i like kind of became friends with and i don't fucking like him anymore i don't oh, like dude. him 
<laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I have so many stories of meeting these motherfuckers. And like, first of all, like I met one of my favorite, like favorite YouTubers in like in person. And I'm like, I don't know how tall, I, however how tall I am. I was like, this, this dude talks hella shit for being like five, three. <laughs> I just remember that and like, like, Hey, love to all the short Kings, unless you're a dickhead. But this guy was like, he would take the most, like, you'll be talking about like, Oh dude, I just had like the best water ever. If you're talking about that, he's like, yeah, I have 4 million subs. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> dude. Like we're not dude, like, he would just bring. he would just bring his clout in a little conversation <laughs> and i just wanted to like so bad just be shut your bitch ass up yeah oh my but god those, those kind of guys i just i just can't get behind that's why I, like i don't even talk to creators like that i literally just talk to the people i grow up with yeah and my teammates i i mean i still i still play video games all the like i i'm not gonna say like i'm friends with you know fucking big ass people or anything but like I know creators. I I mean, I talk to creators and shit like that. But yeah. I still play video games every night with my fucking best friend from kindergarten. Like, mm -hmm. that's the shit that I love. Like, that camaraderie beats anything, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, since you've been best, best friends with them since kindergarten, uh, your party chats get leaked. How much time <laughs> are you serving? How much time are you serving? Um... I don't I don't think any. I don't think I'm serving any time. You're not serving any time. No, but right. I'm definitely guilty by association somehow. I, I feel you there. <laughs> People are gonna definitely question some things about me though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me too. I'm you. What about Shit, you? Man. Oh what, man. What about you? I would get I would get sentenced <laughs> to like, but here's the thing, I'm Epsteining the shit out of myself. It's over for me. Shit, man. They, yep. Guilty. I'm up. Yep. Uh, thank you. Sa sa sa. Over. I'm out. I'm done. That's over. I'm. I'm gonna have to. I don't know what's gonna happen. All I know is uh. Justice system just lost a hell of a lot of money on my trial because <laughs> I am not serving that time, bro. I'm. If they give me any plea deal. Bro, I'm out of there. You, I am are you snitching. Ratting? Yeah, you I am ratting? snitching. Bro, I, everyone's like, oh, I'd never snitch. Bro, if you're like, if you give me five years in prison, and someone's like, oh, mm -hmm. you can, like, if it's from, like, one of my best friends in my family, I would. But if it's for some dude that, like, was a, a, across me in geometry class my sophomore year, I'm a, <laughs> that motherfucker right there did it. I'm going to read off his government name, his social security number. <laughs> His security questions, his childhood dog, his mother's maiden name. I'll read off all that shit. Fuck Mother's, that guy. <laughs> mother's maiden name. Dude, I'm reading off everything. That man is gone. Uh, he can serve that 15 years. I'm getting out on my plea deal. Yeah, for real. There was always, when I was in high school, um, like our whole group, I always thought about that. Like, who am I going down for and who would I not? I'm always like, there's one guy, there's one motherfucker that I'd go down for. And it wasn't even my best friend. I was just like, his parents are teachers. <laughs> I'll go down for him. I can take yep. the heat. He can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've gone I've gone down for a ton of bullshit to my friends. So, yeah, anything jail time. <laughs> that, you get it. That motherfucker that over motherfucker there. That motherfucker right there. <laughs> you see him? Yeah. He's got the JC Penny shoes on? Yeah. His ass. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was probably the the hardest I've laughed in a podcast, dude. If and if 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 his ass is about to get out on parole, you're gonna see my ass with a fucking mustache tape on the jury. That motherfucker guilty. He is not leaving. Bro. If I snitch someone out and they go to prison, I'm making sure they don't get out. Yeah, you're just gonna have to move. Yeah, I mean, get the fuck I'm out of there. Witness protection. I'm out. Yeah change my name everything oh my god so you you are like i said before uh you're a football player and you play wide receiver correct yes i i watched some of your uh, you did a video youtube video you reacting to highlights watched <laughs> yeah. your highlights so I've seen you play football a little bit. 
um what do you do you enjoy uh the whole process of college football oh yeah i love it it's fucking amazing dude so so, awesome. so during the season um where where does where do you guys travel to i'm actually curious we go um so we're the southernmost in the uh we have we play in the conference okay. and so we'll go uh north dakota south dakota nebraska minnesota and i might be leaving out another region but that region just the north of the midwest okay um who do you guys play in like minnesota uh mankato duluth um okay. st no i think st cloud state's team's done i don't know but like yeah all d2 schools in minnesota so we play uh, we had a guy from our high school go to mankato for football mm -hmm. yeah you guys also had a kid go to uh fuck i forgot his name he was a. Uh, he was uh he was a basketball player too. Went to Dragons or something like that. He was he was like the shooting guard on your team at one state. Oh, is his last name Coom? Are you talking about so. Cooper? No, I'm just talking about from Ankeny. Or oh, you moved to Ankeny? Yeah, I moved to Ankeny. My bad. Okay, yeah, I know who Cooper is. That man yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that man is fucking. Yeah, I, I that's who I I grew up with him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we um uh, we played like fucking we had like leagues that we would go to up in Sioux City and shit. I that's funny that you actually know who he is. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this to I'm gonna send him this clip. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. He, uh, shit. No, one of the kid I went to high school with is on. He went to Iowa as well. Oh really? Played football. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Um so what when it comes to like training and shit, like what's what's your schedule looking like like during days? Like are you training like now, like right now for football? Mm -hmm. Well, we just uh this is the last day off for the 4th of July <laughs> break, but you you just have a weight session and then I think after that weight session you have conditioning then you're done for the day cuz if you go too hard then you're going to end up breaking your body down too much yeah but yeah that's cool well um i think i think that's all i that i got when it comes to to what i want to talk about i pr i greatly greatly appreciate you coming here and talking to me i and appreciate the time yeah you're such a cool dude it's not all the time that you know you i was i was hoping deep down in my heart that you're gonna be a good dude coming to talk to me but you exceeded all expectations i appreciate that so yeah you guys can find ben on youtube tiktok instagram and twitter which is all your ads pretty yeah that... i was kind of a i was kind of a dumbass and just didn't have an alias so if someone ever wants to search me up for a job they're gonna see me making jokes about some fucked up shit so <laughs> Kind of, I kind of had to go through YouTube now. I mean, I, I like this is the only chance I get. So yeah, yeah, it's just it's just my name. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's that's it. That's all I got. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.